Hi, I'm Derek Ramsey from Sensophone. I'll be talking about Value Store, a new way to replace memcached ashes with a persistent database storage based on Scylla. All right, I'll be introducing Value Store. It's a new approach to uh, caching. Um, it was designed to replace memcached and it works with Scylla. I'm Derek Ramsey, software engineering manager at Sensophone, where we make Internet of Things devices that do environmental monitoring. I'm the developer and maintainer of Value Store, and I've done a few things. I'm most proud of having five kids. They're my pride and joy. <laughs> what is Value Store? Value Store is a key value and a document store NoSQL database. It's a header-only C++ abstraction layer, and it basically has three components, the Value Store client itself, a Cassandra driver, and a back-end Scylla database. It was designed originally as a memcached replacement, and it's licensed with an MIT license. A little background history. Sensophone had a MySQL database, a single node MySQL database, and we have lots of devices out in the field, so we'd get thousands of uh, requests, and, and they would be spanned over hundreds of connections simultaneous, and we wanted to eliminate the write load on our database, so we put memcached to cache all of that data. The problem was we'd get these high spikes of traffic, and we we grew enough that we were unable to handle the load. MySQL was working just fine, but memcached was just having trouble handling all the requests. So it turns out that if you batch your writes, you can buy yourself some time, but we still had no redundancy, no scalability, and a pretty significant cold cache performance risk. So we decided to replace it. And it turns out that it only took us three days from implement, to implement this, and we didn't have any significant bugs, and it's been in production for a year. Due to our success with it, we and had some interest from members of the community, we decided to open source it so other people could use it as well. In the meantime, we've actually started using it for two other applications in-house. We use it for our web sessions and we also use it for a sort of message queuing fan out producer consumer application as well. And we have, I have a usage guide on our GitHub page and you can read about some of those use, ways to use Value Store. Memcached is pretty ubiquitous. It's installed on lots of Linux machines by default. Um, if you want to know what the limitations of memcached, you can just read the memcached fact yourself, and you'll find out that it's not recommended for sessions. That's one of the things they point out. I point that out because the PHP official documentation has a guide for how to set up memcached for sessions. It has minimal security. They did add SASL authentication support, but it has no encryption, no failover no replication, and no persistence. Of course it has no persistence, it's a RAM cache. But that's also what gives you the cold cache penalty when it has to inevitably crash or reboot. And as we found out the hard way, you really do have to use batching for performance. Whereas with Scylla, batching is actually an anti-pattern and you really should not be using batching. So it makes it a lot easier to use. Now let's talk about the features of Value Store. The Value Store client was first and foremost designed for ease of use. There are only two primary API functions, a get and a retrieve. I mean a, yeah, sorry, a get and a store function. It's an abstraction layer so that you access all of your data in the native language, and that includes the native data types, all the ones listed there. We also wanted to improve our fault tolerance, so we added on the client side a client side write queue and automatic adaptive consistency. I will cover those last two in later slides. So as mentioned, one of the pieces is the driver. 
the Cassandra driver has full thread safety and multi-threading. Practically speaking, that means you can throw requests at it and it will automatically scale to use more CPU resources as required. And you don't have to do any special locking, unlike Memcached, which is not, the C driver is not thread safe. The driver also provides connection control, so if one Scylla node goes down, it will automatically move over to another Scylla node in your cluster, and it will, it's also aware of the data centers that you have, so it'll choose your data centers intelligently as well. And of course, the Scylla database itself comes with a whole host of positives. I'm going to be discussing each one of these in turn. First and foremost is performance, with the obvious question, how in the world can a persistent database even consider competing with a RAM-only cache? Well, you've already seen some of it in the keynotes, how the asynchronous I.O. of, and the user space I.O. scheduler of Scylla permit really low latency, uh, consistent low latency responses, and with that, it allows you to compete much better. In addition, Scylla has its own caching layer so that it roughly competes. In our use case at Sensophone, we have 100% cache hits all the time. We never have to hit the desk, disk even though it has one, and since our database has never actually gone down, we've never actually even had to load it from a disk except for maintenance periods. And the cold cache penalty is actually less severe for Scylla if you use heat-weighted load balance me, balancing because Scylla will automatically warm up your cache for you for the nodes that restart. So this is a pretty useful feature. Security. Memcached is what I would call vulnerable by design. Over the last 24 months, it hasn't been a great time for Memcached, and I don't know if any of you have been bit by the uh, Memcached vulnerabilities, but there they are. Uh, the most recent one, their solution was simply to disable UDP by default rather than fix the problem. <laughs> so by contrast, Value Store comes with complete TLS support right out of the box. It supports client certificate authentication, certificate or server certificate verification by domain and IP, or IP, and intra and inter data center encryption. And those are individually configurable. All of the guides for how to set up uh, encryption are, is actually on our GitHub page. And it supports password authentication and access controls. Inevitably though, the database is going to go offline from the client perspective. Either, either you have network outage or you'll have hardware issues on your database server. So we wanted to add an additional layer of reliability. So we put a client side write queue in the soft producer software. This way when, fail, when writes fail to write to the Scylla database, they buffer up and they automatically retry on the client side. And when the database comes back online, the uh, backlog clears. And it makes sure that ordering is maintained so that the data doesn't get inserted in the wrong order. Producers can keep on producing and your writes are simply delayed. They aren't lost. Scylla has great redundancy. You can set your custom data replication factor per key space. It can be changed on the fly and the client driver is aware of this and will route your traffic to the nodes that actually have your data. So it lowers networking and processing. It also has multi-data center support and again you can set different replication factors per data center and the client is also data center aware. The CAP theorem, it states that you can have consistency, availability, or partition tolerance, pick any two. A lot of databases out there strive to sacrifice availability in order to maintain consistency. Some examples are Redis, the key value database, and Mongo database. What this leads to is what I've called the quorum problem, where you must have n divided by two plus one active nodes in order to allow writes. This leads to very fragile multi-data center setups. So if you want to use a multi-data center setup with those databases, you've got a problem. Let me illustrate that problem for you. 
Let's take this very, very basic multi-data center setup, three nodes in your primary data center and two in your secondary. Note that you have to have an odd number of nodes in a quorum-based system. Th quorum requires three nodes. If your primary data center goes offline, your secondary data center will not take over because it does not have quorum. So all it takes is a well-timed networking outage and you're offline. You can work around this problem by adding a third data center and now quorum requires four nodes. Now if the primary data center goes down, you still have quorum, there's still four nodes up and your backup data center can take over and continue to accept writes. The obvious problem here is that if your primary data center can't see the other two data centers, it has to go down, which puts you in the uncomfortable situation where your primary data center is working perfectly fine and your backup data centers actually take your primary down with it. This is not ideal. So the solution to this problem is automatic adaptive consistency, and this is done at the client side. Scylla is an eventually consistent database with tunable consistency. What this buys us is the ability to adaptively downgrade the consistency level on a retry of requests. This will dramatically reduce the likelihood of inconsistency. It can't necessarily limit all cases entirely, but there's a number of cases where it will actually be just fine. And as a bonus with the, the hinted handoff feature and sill and out, it recovers, nodes that go down recover much quickly, much more quickly. Let me illustrate this for you. If data is written to all the nodes and two nodes go down in say Redis or Mongo, you'd have to stop using the system. But with value store, you can just keep going because the data on the last node is guaranteed to be consistent if you use consistency mode all. Just a review of, or an introduction to consistency modes, depending on what you know already. Consistency mode at all is where you write to all the nodes. Quorum is where you write to two out of three, or a majority of the nodes. And there's another mode where you can just write to one of the nodes. So if you write in quorum, it, you have to have at least two nodes go down before you will lose any data. So that's still pretty good. But if you really, really need the, opt the security, you can always do uh, all. Reads are similar. You can separate, set these up separately, so you can have a different set of consistency modes for your reads and your writes. If you want to set up your writes, say, for one node, but always read all the nodes, as long as no nodes goes down, you can maintain write performance and sacrifice it on the read. You can combine these to, to tune the level of consistency that your application needs. It's a little, you, if you want to talk to me about this after, I can go into some use cases. Scylla, the Scylla architecture itself is almost infinitely scalable because you can, due to the shard per core design, you can just keep throwing sh new uh, cores and new machines at it and it's perfectly happy to scale up. And with the driver sharding aware, it will automatically route traffic to the appropriate uh, location. By contrast, memcached is physically limited. And if you really need the shard, you've got to use, do it manually or with some third party software. So this is not ideal. Now, how about using value store itself? This is an example configuration for value store. You'll note that it's a C++ template class, and the only querying you actually have to write is the creation of the table. Once you've created the table, you no longer need to write any CQL queries ever again. And this is the minimal configuration. There's more options for SSL and things of that nature. And here's the usage. Incredibly simple, instantiate uh, an object. You can pass in, uh, alternatively, a configuration file. But here in this example, we take a key value and we store it. We check to see if the result of the storage was successful. 
most of the time it will be. The retries happen automatically. You don't have to intervene. Then I retrieve that result back out. If the result comes back, back successfully, then you can do something with it. On the left column here are the things that SenseFone was concerned about when it decided to get rid of memcached. We wanted all of the things on the left-hand side. And memcached, of course, had pretty much none of them. And in evaluating some of the alternatives, none of them really met our need. In the keynote, DynamoDB was already discussed, and you know that DynamoDB just doesn't compete as far as performance goes, but it's also not open source. It costs more, and it's cloud-based. So you get vendor lock-in. Um, Redis is an interesting solution, but it's not, it's, again, from the CAP theorem, it's not multi-master replication. So it has all of those issues I went in with the quorum problem. And yeah, as far as complexity goes, I want to talk about that in context of Redis. Redis is much more complex. It has dozens of, of commands. If you don't need that level of complexity in your application, then Value Store is a fantastic, simple way of using Scylla in a key value scenario. Redis isn't going to perform as well. Scylla outperforms it. And it only has master-slave replication, as I just mentioned. Plus, they recently changed their licensing for some of their modules to change to common clause. And that may throw some people off who are worried about that sort of thing. One of the things you could do with Redis is replace it with Pettis, which uses C-Star, the same I.O. engine that Scylla uses. Or you could use, that's if you need the complexity, and if you don't, you can always use Scylla. Or Value Store, excuse me. And I wanted to throw in one more thing about Mongo database and Couch database. These are JSON document stores. It is possible to use value store in a JSON document storage scenario. There is a usage guide covering that scenario. It's not quite as full featured, but depending on what your needs, it might actually be a good solution. Mongo as well just recently went through a licensing change that is interesting. I believe someone from Scylla has already written on that topic. But here's just a little example for how you might generate a document store with document IDs. We have full JSON support, so then you can have native JSON, and it makes it much easier to uh, manipulate. Um, we just recently uh, released bindings for PHP, Python, and Perl so that value store could be used with it. Uh, we'll probably make some more as the community requests it. So if a feature request shows up for a different language binding, that would probably mean we would be working on that next. I'd also like to add some command line utilities to allow uh, the scripts to be able to use value store as well. And some other new features to try and tweak performance. SenseFone doesn't need the absolute greatest performance, so we, don't act we hide the futures that get generated. But if you need the to eke out the maximum amount of performance, that would be one thing that would be worth looking into. And a non-template version for those people who don't like templates. Thank you.